Good morning, everybody. It's Danny and Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. Guys, we're going to do a little bit of walking around looking at tomatoes. Uh, maybe a few peppers, just to kind of check it out. And see what is really going on with the growing environment with tomatoes. Now, we have two of them in a container here. This is the uh, Celebrity Plus. Mm. They seem to be doing pretty good. Uh, not, not much problem with them. We haven't picked any tomatoes off of them yet, but they are loading up with tomatoes. Now, these tomatoes get the morning sun up till dinner time, and after dinner, they get shade for the rest of the day. Um, like I said, the, the environment is controlled here. Not the environment, but the soil is. They're inside a container. We uh, mixed our own potting soil mix here. We mixed our own soil from the place here together with it. We put our own amendments in it. To try to get these plants up and going because we wanted to do a difference between container grown versus growing in the garden in the ground and i'll be honest with you what i'm seeing is that what's grown in the container probably is doing a little better than what's grown in the soil in the garden now right next to it here is peppers and we're going to take a look at them all right now these are container grown peppers <clears throat> these peppers get the morning sun only they get from morning till about oh i'm going to say till about dinner time and from dinner time on they're in the shade guys this is the secret growing them in a container where you can control the environment and the, the what's in the soil and guys look at the peppers on this i mean just look and i've been i've already picked them telling how many off of this last week we picked a bunch of peppers off of this uh you saw a video we did of picking peppers. This is the uh, yellow Marconi. These only get the morning sun. They get no evening sun. And peppers are supposed to love the heat. But guys, what's going on with the uh, weather today, they cannot take the intense heat of the sun anymore. You've got to take a pepper plant. And once it gets past dinner time, it needs to be in a shade or it needs to have a shade cloth put over it or something other. Because, I mean, it's not just that one plant. I mean, these plants are literally loading up with peppers. We have four of them here that we, you know, we're watching here. Now, I've been putting some liquid phosphorus in this because, in my opinion, what I have, lo what I have discovered with what's going on is the fact that the phosphorus is being bound up into the soil where the plant cannot take it up. So I've been putting liquid phosphorus around this. Now I have dry phosphorus but uh, in the granular form, but it doesn't seem to do as good as the liquid phosphorus. And I'm using uh, uh, from Dr. Earth. I'm using it from that. It's called a high phosphate uh, bloom and grow. And guys, the evidence is in the plants. They are, and I will say this now, and in a container grown pepper, I am adding a little bit of magnesium to it in the form of Epsom salt. Uh, now these have been limed good, so the pH is right on them. There's a lot to take into factors whenever you're growing something like this. You might put one trace mineral in it, but if you're not careful, if you got too much of one, it will bind up the others and won't allow them to take it up. So you got to kind of like watch the leaves of the plant. Look at the leaf. The leaf will tell you everything. These leaves are doing pretty good. Um, they're looking really, really nice. You know, you're going to get a few of them right along the bottom that's touching the dirt that dies off. But other than that, I am a fan now of container-grown peppers rather than growing them in the garden in the soil. Okay, now let's look at the Celebrity Plus that's in the garden grown in the ground out here. Uh, we looked at what was grown in the containers. They looked really good. The leaves looked good on it and everything. But look at these grown in the ground here. Oh, let me just take this leaf off so we can get a better, a better look at it up here. Look at what's going on with it, how motley looking it is. Uh, there's lots of problems going on with this here. Doesn't look as good as what's grown in the container. Now, the Celebrity Plus is supposed to be immune to the spotted wilt virus. Guys, look at this. We're starting to see these... Uh, different viruses hitting it out here in the garden where the rain can splatter up from the ground. And I actually have a, a ground cover down uh, to prevent that from happening as much as possible.
but out here we're still seeing it happening and even in the plant behind it here this is another celebrity this whole row is celebrity plus look at the look at the leaves on it how they're beginning to look like that they almost got a variegated look to them uh, here's one here that's really bad this is showing that we have a major deficiency in something other out here in the soil probably magnesium or something to that nature is what it's looking like guys this is why i wanted to show the ones that was in the containers because in a container you can control the environment in that pot now those are 25 gallon pots for those of you who want to know or a mineral tub a cattle mineral tub uh, is plenty for growing a tomato or a pepper in okay another factor that we're factoring in here is that both of these are outside. Uh, these are like right here, and probably less than 40 feet right yonder is where the containers are. But the difference is, those containers are really close to those trees right up above it there, and the sun gets knocked off of them at dinner time. These are staying in the sun, so probably around three o'clock in the evening. So is it the fact that they're getting three more hours of sunshine than those over there are? And those are in a controlled environment as far as the soil in the pot's concerned versus in the ground here. A lot of things to take into consideration for the future for me and Wanda. Uh, they both get the same amount of rain from the sky. Those over there get the same rain that these get. So we don't think it has anything to do with the rain right now. But what we are trying to figure out rapidly because of the food crisis that we're fixing to face this coming year is a simple fact. What works? and what works the best. Right now, it looks like the containers are doing a better job than actually putting it in the soil in the garden out here. The Celebrity Plus has succumbed to the same problem that uh, the heirlooms have, the wilt. After we just had all this massive rain, this was a perfectly healthy plant, loaded with tomatoes, and I come out here this morning after the big rain last night and look at it this morning. It's just wilted down. So the Celebrity Plus is not immune to whatever this problem is that we're facing with this wilt going on. So it is June the 22nd at 647 in the morning. All right, we have walked through the tomato patch and we have one Celebrity that has succumbed to the wilt after the rain. Um, the leaves have died on it. This one probably succumbed a day or two it, ago. It probably succumbed to it yesterday after, after the first big rain. We've had another big rain. Uh, of course, it's not loaded with tomatoes. We done picked all the tomatoes off of it, but two. And the thing about it is, is it doesn't keep the tomatoes from getting ripe. If we just leave it, uh, by tomorrow, these tomatoes will be turned. Um, and I know it's just probably a natural process, but um we have noticed we have two of the celebrity plus that has succumbed to this now we're gonna go take a look at the other celebrity plus all right guys this is the other celebrity plus here and i have a lot of times if i especially if i put it in the row with the celebrities i put a, a sticker on it that tells me there's a, a celebrity plus that were one of the other ones didn't make it um we had a nine inch nine and a quarter inch rain the other day um, and then last night we had a one inch rain and now we have two of the celebrity pluses that has succumbed to this problem and uh, you know it's only one of the celebrities so I'm keeping notes of all of this about which variety of tomatoes I'm going to grow in the future as far as which one stands the elements better than the others now you know we're not saving seeds off any of these so we're not worried about it but I am paying attention to which variety of tomatoes with this new weather anomalies seems to be holding up the best. Now the Cherokee, I mean the uh, Creole, we've lost all of them but one or two plants. Uh, so they, they're no good. They won't be able to withstand this at all. But as of right now, the celebrity is doing better. Now we're fixing to go up to the front garden to where the Amish paste are. And we're going to take a look at the heirloom Amish paste. All right, guys, we've moved up to the front garden now. These are our Amish paste down through here. 
Amish paste has always been our go-to tomato here in the south. It has been our best tomato. This year, just like every year, tomato, the, the heirloom Amish paste gets that, uh, the wilt bar, I mean the spotted uh, bars from the bottom down here. They, 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 that just happens. It's one of the downfalls to the humidity here in the south. It just hits these things and guys, they just, you know, they don't last. That's why we usually try to get the most of the bottom leaves off as much as we can. But what I love about the Amish paste is look at these tomatoes. Look at the size of those tomatoes. I mean, this is mine and Wanda's go-to tomato. I mean, look, they're big as softballs. We love them. And when it comes to making things like salsa and things to this nature, I mean, you just cannot beat these. Uh, they make just really good salsa because they're mostly meaty. They don't have a lot of seeds in them, and they're just fantastic tasting also. Um, the simple fact that they're an heirloom, we save the seeds from these because these are our biggest and best tomatoes. And we may even have next year, we might have some up on our Etsy store. depends on how many we end up with. But guys, just like all the heirlooms that are out there today, the disease is beginning to hit all heirlooms. It's not just the simple fact that it's any one variety. It's hitting all of them. All of our heirlooms are being hit by whatever this wilt virus is. We've lost like six or seven of the Amish paste down through here to that wilt. Whatever it is, after the rain, it happens. And I haven't figured it out yet. And it's not because it's too wet. My soil is extremely sandy. It can rain today. And guys, uh, tomorrow or the next day, I can go ahead and plow. I mean, that's how this soil you know, drains out that quickly. And it usually grows some of the best vegetables that we've ever had. So we're going to go down through here and see if we can't go ahead and get the rest of these Amish paste off of here. Guys, I mean, what can you say about that? Those things are nice, big tomatoes. All right, guys, here's one here that the, <clears throat> that the wilt has hit. It's about took the whole plant out. Um, literally, the tomatoes are on it. Oh, there's a few left. You know, these, uh, we got a worm that got into the side of this one. It's still edible. I mean, he's not in there. He just chewed on the side of it a little bit. But we'll have to come in here now. We got to pull this one out. And that's another one gone because of the wilt. You see how it's doing? Just after the rain, we move down. I mean, guys, I love, I love my Amish paste. Them big old beautiful tomatoes. I mean, I can't even hold them all in my hands. There's more in here. I'm going to give Ms. Wanda a couple of these here to hold for me. We try to get them off like this right here and just let them turn. Because we've learned they do better if we let them turn off of the plant. Because our weather is just so bad here with humidity. That literally, I mean, look at that. Pretty tomatoes. Just beautiful. Here's another one oh, right here that has succumbed to the wilt virus. I mean, look at, si look, look at the size of some of the tomatoes. They're huge. And they'll eventually turn and we'll make salsa or whatever we got to make out of them. But guys, it's such a shame to sit and watch such beautiful plants after a rain do this. Here is the blueberry tomatoes here we got them off our plants down there and then we have our cherokee purple both of these are heirlooms uh the thing that we're noticing the blueberries have not had the uh wilt virus at all yet and they're an heirloom now they haven't had it at all and they're outside and they're outside yep just like the rest of them but now this is our cherokee purples here now guys this is a beautiful tomato right here this is in the high tunnel None of them have went have had the wilt virus, and they are doing beautiful inside the high tunnel. We have we've got some more of them stuck in here. I mean, they're just stuck around. Uh, these are pretty tomatoes, and here's a few Amish paste that we got this morning right here. 
Uh, these things, like I showed you, they're big old beautiful tomatoes there. We will uh, use these for salsa and save seed from these because they are an heirloom. All right, guys. Um, we're going to probably end it right here. We've showed you most of all of our tomatoes. Um, we didn't go in the high tunnel today, and we didn't do the blueberry tomato plants, but I promise you they're doing fantastic. Uh, the chair, I mean the uh, Creoles that's in the other garden, all of them have died but two. Uh, we picked them, uh, got that over with because there's only just like two or three tomatoes left on them. But guys, I have a video out there. It's called Secret to Growing Amazing Tomatoes. And it has helped more people to be able to grow their tomatoes because most people don't realize that there's determinate and indeterminate tomatoes. Now these are an indeterminate here. This is the Amish paste. Uh, the celebrity and the celebrity plus is a, de, a sem, the celebrity is a semi-determinate. The celebrity plus, I'm not sure if it's a determinate or a semi-determinate, but you wanna, the pruning is completely different on both of those varieties. Uh, so go watch my secrets to growing awesome tomatoes video and it'll kind of help you to understand a little bit more about tomatoes and how to prune them what's going on with diseases with them and all these kind of factors that's uh, that's in with it i think it might help you to be able to grow better tomatoes now do understand that in the environment that we're living in today it's a cat and mouse game with all of them it is in your environment trying to figure out which variety of tomatoes does the best for your environment. Down here where we're at, the Amish paste has always been our go-to tomato. Guys, it's starting to really succumb to a lot of viral issues now because of the climate. The Celebrity Plus we was hoping would be a really great tomato for us. Uh, it's a new hybrid coming out on the market. And so far it's doing okay. The Celebrity, still doing okay for us, it's a hybrid. But the blueberry tomatoes, if you like salad tomatoes, it is fantastic. It's in the Indigo Series tomatoes. But growing in the high tunnel, the Cherokee Purples have not shown any problems to any of these problems. So guys, growing outside in containers, growing in the field, growing on ground, uh, ground cover, growing determinants, growing indeterminates, uh, growing in high tunnels, you decide which is best for you and your environment because I guarantee you, in the very near future, you're going to have to grow your own if you're going to want to eat it fresh. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. Let's get rid of this little bit of a bad part right here. Isn't that pretty? Mm. I'm trying to be precise. One slice. Cover a whole piece of bread. Yeah, it ain't falling all to pieces. No, it's nice. There's not a big core in it. I was afraid that there would be a big core. Yeah, there's a little bit. I'm hitting one now. Yeah, but I mean, you're all the way to the end and haven't hit a big core. You can cut that out around it, but I'm amazed. I'd forgotten that they weren't. Look at that. Man. I do it like filet in a fish. This is my first tomato sandwich from my greenhouse. This is the Cherokee Purple. Danny and I both noticed how meaty it is. Not a lot of juice running. I've got bacon, mayonnaise, and this is Malabar spinach. We don't have lettuce this time of the year unless you buy it, and I don't buy lettuce. So the Malabar spinach is going to make a great sandwich.